All right, so I'm going to really quickly go over these ecology practice questions that you should have done on Friday. All right, so question three is asking, based on the graph, you see what uh, what can be concluded about the resource availability for this population. So I know anytime I see population, resource, anything like that, I know that I'm going to be looking somewhere in ecology. So if I see here under population ecology, I see some of the key points are that if resources increase and the population is going to increase, so that's one. So if the resource increase, then the population is going to increase. Now, if I look at my graph, I can see on the x-axis I have time and on the y-axis I have population, and I see that this population is going up and down. So if my population is going up and down, then based on my key point and my definition, then the resources would be going up and down. So if I go through my answer choices, the resources were increasing. Well, they were some of the time, but not all of the time, so this is gonna be false. The resources were decreasing sometimes, but not all of the time. So again, this is false. I'm trying to get a whole picture of what this is showing. The resources were fluctuating or changing. All that means is that sometimes they're going up and sometimes they're going down. So yes, this would match. And then just to be sure, the resources remain constant. Constant would look something like this, that I have a flat line, nothing is changing, so this is not a match because this does not match what is shown here. Number four was really tricky. So if I bracket my question, which statement below accurately describes the characteristic that would be present if all three types of ecological relationships overlapped? Whew. So if I'm talking about ecological relationships, if I go to here, I see that there are four of them, and here's my annotations for each. So if I go back in the beginning, I want to see what three ecological relationships they were talking about. So commensalism, remember one species is happy and the other one doesn't care. Mutualism, they're both happy. And parasitism is one is really happy and one is like, whoo, get off of me, I'm really unhappy. All right. So it's asking if all of them overlapped, and my hint was to draw a Venn diagram. So what this would look like is that I have three relationships, so commensalism, mutualism, parasitism, and they're asking me what characteristic would go right in the middle here. What would this be? So if things are over, if all of these relationships are overlapping, that means they're all working together. When things work together, that's called symbiosis. So when relationships work together, that's called symbiosis. So as I go through my answer choices, I'm going to match them to this right here. The characteristic would represent a form of symbiosis. Well, right away, I know that that's, that's a match. <laughs> so this is the right answer. Um, I'm just going to go through to explain, if you picked another one, why that couldn't be it. The characteristic would represent a predatory relationship. Well, that doesn't really make any sense because one that wasn't ever an ecological relationship that was said. And then why would everything overlapping result in something negative? So this is no match. Um, the characteristic would represent competition for resources. There's nothing really in here about resources, so I can't tell that. And then the characteristic would fluctuate depending on the organisms involved. I have no information about that. I have no idea. I, I just have no idea from what, what they gave me. All right. Number five, below is a cause and effect diagram about human activities affecting a water ecosystem. What information should go in the last box of the graphic organizer? So if I go through here, it's asking, or it's telling me that human activities cause the consumption of fossil energy, which caused emissions of primary pollutants. Because I'm talking about a specific population, that means that I should go here. And the other key point that was said is that chemicals cause algae to grow. All right, so if I go here, a pollutant is a chemical, so I can assume that algae would increase, at least in a water environment, which this is. All right, so A, the amount of algae increasing causing fish to die. Oh yeah, if there's a lot of algae, it limits the amount that the fish can actually breathe because the algae is taking up all that oxygen. All right, 
So this seems to be the right answer to me. All right, so pollutants are recaptured and brought back to the facility. That's really hard to do, so that's false. That's really unlikely for what they would do to you. Water remains safe to drink. Well, if there's pollutants in your water, then no, that would not be safe. Don't do that. Water is then ready, this should say, ready to be used for agricultural purposes. Why well, would say no? Because if it's already polluted, you wouldn't want to put that on crops because then you would then eat that too. All right, number six. Which statement below accurately describes the relationship between the organisms shown? All right, so let's remember. So any sort of plant is going to be a producer. Any organism that eats the plant is going to be a primary consumer. That's writing why I'm writing ones. And then any organism that eats a primary consumer is going to be a secondary consumer. So a bird is first a primary and a secondary. These are just secondary. All right, cool. So, awesome. So now I've labeled that. I'm going to go through. Foxes and owls have a predatory relationship. Well, there's no arrow connecting any of these organisms, so no, this is false. That's not happening. That would require that either the fox is eating the owl or the owl is eating the fox. Neither is happening, so this is, this is not true. Rabbits and grasshoppers have a predatory relationship. So if I find rabbits and grasshoppers, okay, there's no arrow connecting between them, so they can't have a predatory relationship. Although they do compete for food. But because of this first part, it's not true. Birds and grasshoppers have a predatory relationship. Well, yes, there's an arrow connecting them. Birds are eating grasshoppers. And they compete for food. Well, yes, they're both competing to eat these grains. So this looks like a match. And then rabbits and carrots have a parasitic relationship. Well, I can't really tell that. I don't... They could have a predatory relationship, but that's different from a parasitic relationship. All right, so that's not a match. My correct answer is C. All right, so that's it for our ecology breakdown.